Hello friends, welcome to Amazon Safety Webcast. In this video, we will see how to configure DHCP failover in Windows Server 2012 R2. But before that, let's understand what is DHCP failover. DHCP failover is a new feature available in Windows Server 2012 R2 and Windows Server 2012, which ensures continuous availability of DHCP service to the client's computer. In Windows Server 2008 R2, there were two high availability options available for DHCP server. First, DHCP in a Windows failover cluster and split scope DHCP. When you implement DHCP failover, two DHCP servers share DHCP scope and lease information, enabling one server to provide DHCP lease to DHCP clients if the other server is down or unavailable. The new DHCP failover functionality allows you to configure two DHCP servers in either an active passive configuration known as a hot standby or in an active active configuration known as a load balanced. We will now see the steps on how to configure DHCP failover in Windows Server 2012 R2 computer. When you are planning to implement DHCP failover, keep these things in mind. First, both DHCP server in a DHCP failover relationship must be running Windows Server 2012 or later operating system. Both computers participating in a DHCP failover relationship must have a DHCP server rule installed and running. Remember, DHCP failover support only DHCP version 4 scopes. DHCP v6 scopes cannot be failover enabled. You cannot configure DHCP failover on a DHCP scope to include more than two DHCP servers. So in this video demonstration, we will be using two servers, each on which DHCP server will be installed and on our first server, which is our domain controller as well as the DHCP server and on that server already installed DHCP server rule. And now we are moving to our another server where we are planning to install DHCP server and then we will configure DHCP failover. So let's move to our member server. Let's click on local server. As you can see, the server's computer name is srt-dhcp01 and our domain name is mylab.local. The IP address of our server is 192.168.49.7. So first of all, let's install DHCP server role on the server. Let's click on manage, select add roles and features. On before you begin console, click on next. Now select role base of feature base installation and then click on next. Now on the screen, we have to select the server on which we are going to install DHCP server role. In our case, that is our local server, name srt dhcp one Select the server and then click on next. Now on the screen, we have to select the server role and for us, it will be DHCP server. I'll select DHCP server. Click on add feature to include the features required by DHCP server. Now let's click on next. Now on the screen, we don't have to install any additional features. That's why I'm going with default. Click on next. Here you can read a brief overview information about DHCP server. Once you read it, then click on next. Now click on install to start the installation process. Now let's click on complete DHCP configuration to launch DHCP post installation wizard. Let's click on next. Now select use the following user's credential because already I log in as a domain administrator on the member server. That's why we are going to authorize with our administrator's credential. Let's click on commit. Let's click on close. And let's click on close again. And now let's open DHCP Management Console. Select DHCP. On DHCP Management Console, expand your server name. Expand IP version 4 and right click on it and select new scope. Click on next. Now here I'm going to specify the scope name and that is scope 1. Now here we have to specify the IP range 192.168.49.11.2.192.168.49.200. The submit mask will be default. Let's click on next. Now we are not going to add any exclusion and we are not going to configure the delay submit. Let's click on next. Now the release interval will be 6 hours. Let's click on next. Yes, I want to configure these options. Next. Now here I'm going to specify the gateway's IP address and that is 192.168.49.1 for my case. Let's add it and then click on next. Let's click on next. 
next again and select yes i want to activate this scope now click on next click on finish to complete a new scope creation wizard now here we have one scope and now we are going to configure the dhcp failover for our scope one so select your scope and right click on it and select configure failover now on the screen you can see all available scope on your tcp server right now we have only one scope and that's why that scope is available here let's click on next now on the screen we have to specify the part of server to use for failover let's click on add server now by selecting this and clicking on browse options you can manually select your server and in our domain we have a two authorized dhcp server srtf and dc01 and srtf and dhcp01 so select SRTF and DC01 because this is the our local server. Let's click on it. Click on next. On this screen, we have to specify the parameter for DHCP failover relationship. Now, first we have to specify the relationship name. That is a name to identify DHCP failover relationship. So let's specify the name DC01 DHCP01. You can specify any name to identify DHCP failover relationship. Now the next one is maximum client lead time. It determines the maximum amount of time that one server can extend a DHCP lease for a client beyond the time known by the DHCP failover server. Next one is a mode. Now the by default selected mode is load balance. Load balance settings for an active active configuration or we can select hot standby mode for an active passive configuration now here as you can see the role of partner server if you want to use this server as an active dhcp server and there were another dhcp server that is dc01 as a standby server that time you have to select standby if you want to use dc01 as an active dhcp server that time from here you have to select active but for this demonstration we want to use that server as a standby partner now here you have to specify address reserved for standby server and that is 5% default. You can change it as per your requirement. Now the next thing is a state switch over interval and the by default value is 60 minutes. If the settings is enabled, the active DHCP server will automatically place its partner into down state when it cannot communicate with it. For the specified amount of time and that is 60 minutes you can change it as per your requirement now the last one is enable message authentication these options enable authentication for the failover replication traffic between partners if you enable these options you must also specify the shared secret password and we are not going to use that options and also I'm not going to use state switch over interval as well. Let's click on next and click on finish to configure failover. And that's it. Add scope on a partner server, successful, disable scope on a partner server, creation of failover configuration on a partner server. Then the next step is creation of failover configuration on a host server and activate scope on a partner server and the configure failover successful is the last message which we are receiving. Let's click on close. And now let's move to our uh, DC01. Let's log in as a domain administrator and let's expand our DSCP server that is SRT and DC01. Expand IP version 4. And here you can see we have a scope, scope 1. And there's if we see address pool starting from 49.11 to 200. If you see the property of your scope and if you see the property now click on failover now here you can see a relationship name partner server that is our SRTF and DHCP01 server mode hot standby max client lead time is 1 hours state switch to interval is disabled and as you can see the state of this server as well as the partner server are working normally now let's click on ok now let's move to our member server and select IP version 4, select properties, select failover 
and from here you can edit and delete DSCV failover relationship. Let's click on edit. Now from this screen you can view and edit DHCP failover relationship. As you can see the state of the server is we can see a normal as well as partner server is working normal. Now if you want to modify anything like uh, if you want to change DHCP failover relationship mode that time you can select it from here. Like we select hot standby mode earlier. If you want to select the load balance mode that time you just have to select this. And then you have to specify the percentage of load on a local server as well as partner server. And from this you can select state switch or interval and let's specify the value 30 minutes. You can specify this value as per your requirement. Now once you modify the settings, let's click on OK and let's click on OK again. Now if we move to our other DHCP server and let's click on refresh and if we see properties and failover as you can see the options are updated on this DHCP server as well now as you can see the state switch over interval is 30 minutes so in this way we can configure DHCP failover in Windows Server 2012 R2 that's it for this video demonstration thanks for watching this video